Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening uh, from Egypt. This is me again, Asam Hilmi, uh, success partner with AOA Energy, and will be will be your moderator on today's webinar. Thanks for joining us. Before we start, I would like to make sure that you are listening to me clearly and that you see my screen. So please type one in the chat uh, area so that I can make sure of this. Can anyone confirm, please, that my voice is clear? Hello? Yes, Engineer Assam, go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. So guys, before we start today, uh, I'd like to make a shorter presentation. This is a typical presentation that we make to give you uh, some information about OBA Energy and the services that we provide. Uh, today is a very interesting webinar uh, titled Dual Intervention Barriers. This is the 59th webinar, uh, part of the pre-series uh, of webinars that we provide to our audience. You can find all these uh, 68 webinars on our YouTube channel uh, if you missed any of them. Uh, so regarding my presentation today, uh, it's about OBA upcoming services plan. Uh, this is our dashboard. Our team is an international team. We exist in three countries. We have uh, a group of more than 40 uh, experienced uh, instructors, more than 10 years experience. Uh, we have conducted some uh, uh, internship programs for groups of students from Lebanon, uh, like. Uh, Beirut Arab University in, in, in Lebanon. We, as I mentioned, that we provided uh, more than 65 free webinars that are all available on our YouTube channel, uh, as long as 30 live courses. These live courses is uh, like one week course, uh, like four or three hours every day. All these 30 uh, courses are available as recording and you can purchase uh, them. Uh, as I will be uh, presenting in the next slides. So if you if you follow us on social media, you can find that we are uh, existing in on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube as well. We almost reach it everywhere worldwide. I'm not talking here about numbers of uh, participants that join us in our services, but I'm talking about uh, how far we can reach worldwide. Uh, we have. We have the diversified team of instructors, including females and, and males as well. So what's next? Yes, uh, this is our eighth wave of quarter courses, live courses. Actually, we have already finished three of these courses that will be available as a recording uh, very soon. Uh, the, the upcoming course is advanced will intervention operations that will be conducted uh, in the period from uh, 24th of June till the 29th of June. This is very soon. So if you are interested in joining us in this course, please go ahead, register in uh, the form. You can find the form in the chat area now. Uh, also, you can scan the next uh, QR code if you'd like to join us in this uh, course. I will give you a minute to uh, to make sure that you scan this code if you'd like to join us in this course. Okay, as I as I mentioned uh, earlier, that we have conducted more than thirty live courses, uh, different topics. Uh, actually, in different uh, softwares and interesting topics in the uh, our stream, midstream, oil and gas industry, you can find here on the right side of my slides that we have conducted many courses uh, regarding the theory of the pipes and uh, tech log, petrol, 
of um, FRACCAD and many other interesting courses in preparation design, introduction to data analysis. All these courses you can find on the, on the left corner of my slide are available as a uh, recording for your purchase. And the more you uh, purchase courses with us, the, the biggest discount that we will be offering to you. Uh, here is also a QR code uh, that you can scan to apply or register for any of these courses. It's also the same link that I sent in the chat uh, a minute ago. So you have a few seconds to scan this QR code if you'd like to join us in our ambassadors group. Regardless of the mentorship program that we uh, provide in OBA Energy, we have conducted more than 34 uh, mentorship programs. This is one-to-one -to -one, uh, uh, educational program that is designed for uh, master or PhD students or even students who are looking to learn a specific uh, area in, in their expertise that they are looking to uh, get more experience in it. Uh, this is on hourly basis. Uh, you choose your instructor, you you would determine what you would like to learn. It's not a course, not a syllabus. You you all you you actually design your learning journey with us. I I also encourage you all to visit our website obacourses.com uh, to find all these recording of, of live courses that I mentioned earlier are available on our website along as many other interesting courses that are pre-recorded courses in the oil and gas industry. More, more screenshot from uh, from the slides you can find here. Uh, this is some pictures uh, that we'd like to share with you. This very lovely pictures from the internship uh, programs that we organized for uh, students from Lebanon. Uh, as I mentioned, you just uh, can join our ambassadors group by uh, joining us in one of, or more of our services being a live course, a recorded course, uh, internship program, mentorship program. Uh, I don't want to be so long. Uh, we would like to start our session today. So uh, short notes for you before we start the session. I have muted all your microphones. Sorry for that, but this is for your uh, benefit that you can all uh, listen to as an instructor uh, clearly. If you have any questions during the webinar, please put your question in the chat area. I will read it uh, to our instructor by the end of the webinar. If you are joining us using a different name than your real name, uh, like iPhone, Galaxy, or something like this, I, I'd like also to encourage you to rename yourself as we will be sending uh, certificates of attendance uh, in just one week from today. Uh, now is the time to, sorry. So it's now the time to introduce our uh, guest speaker for today, Engineer Abdullah Salman. Uh, Engineer Abdullah is, uh, has more than 10 years experience working as well intervention uh, engineer and supervisor for coil tubing, slick line, wire line in the oil and gas world. Uh, in the area of the well uh, surveillance engineering, he started as a senior field engineer uh, performed all well intervention jobs and the operation uh, and then operation engineer in order to manage supervise daily well intervention operation jobs in the field. And General Abdullah, thank you, thanks for joining us today uh, and for sharing your knowledge with us. Now the stage is yours to start your uh, webinar. Thank you, Engineer Asom, for your introduction and all you have done. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us today, our webinar, Will Intervention Barriers. 
Our agenda today is to discuss the following. We will start. We will start by introduction to the wheel barrier and the envelope to get to know the difference between envelope and elements. Especially, there are many candidates have a confusion between the envelope and the element. So we will clear this confusion by get some of definition for the both of them. After that, we will go, go through classification of wheel barrier like a primary, secondary, tertiary, and mechanical and hydrostatic type. And also we will cover wire line and coil tubing barrier as engineer Assam said in the introduction, this webinar has a point of many points in well intervention, advanced well intervention operation course. She will talk about this issue in details. In the last section of this webinar, we will cover the well barrier equipment or WPE well barrier elements. Okay, so what is the well barrier? Well barrier, it is a system of one or more dependent elements to prevent the flow of gas or oil from down to up, from wheel bore to surface. As you know, barrier are safety margins established by the operating company. The operating company mean here, owner company, to perform what? To perform repeated activity on oil and gas wells. The main purpose of wheel barrier is to prevent the flow, the flow, sorry, the expression to prevent, control, reduce losses caused by undesired flow or accident events. This webinar will cover the various aspects of well barriers. So the envelope in the right diagram here constitute the shape of the well as a closed system contain oil and gas inside this envelope. But the elements can constitute the part integral part of this shape. So we can say the red line here, it is called envelope. Any elements consist of valves or, or backers or something like uh, a tubing ganger called elements. It is constitute the shape of envelope. So we can uh, say the envelope is closed the system contain oil and the gas inside it. We have in the next slide, most common example in the oil and the gas field with two envelopes. First one, Packer tubing envelope. We can show that by the pointer in bin, in red bin. It is Packer tubing envelope, which can be consist of this envelope as a closed system we can say this envelope. This envelope called Packer tubing envelope. The elements constitute the shape of this envelope like here, casing Packer below. The oil coming from here cannot enter the, the area of this envelope. By this casing, this is the first one Old element. Second one, to prevent the oil come to this envelope all out of this envelope, the packer, this, and tubing, to prevent the oil come to this envelope or out of this envelope. Also tubing hanger that can hang the tubing and seal the, the annulus between tubing and the annulus A. Also, Christmas tree valves can be considered as element of this envelope backer and tubing envelope. Second envelope here, production casing envelope, which can be represented by green line. This envelope called production casing envelope. Where is the production casing envelope? The production casing envelope as represented in this green line. 
have a lot of elements like a production casing, side outlet valves, tubing, hanger, and backer. That is the example given for envelope and elements. We have now, uh, right now, example and the question for the IWCF, what is the difference between barrier and the envelope? The, que the question here, what is the definition of barrier? Just take a second and answer. Closed off area, it is barrier, it's not barrier, it is envelope. Because we said envelope, it is closed area or closed system. So this is not right. The right one is something that prevent the flow of hydrocarbon from well. Something mean device or substance can prevent the flow of the well bore to the surface. So the right answer here, number B, which is something that prevent the flow of hydrocarbon from a well. Barrier objective. What is the barrier objective? The barrier, the barrier used to prevent any major hydrocarbon leakage from the well to external environment during normal production operation or well intervention or while completion setting or retrieving or also while drilling. Another objective for a well barrier shutting the well at any catastrophic situation or emergency situation like hitting the platform or crashing the platform by ship in oil and offshore oil wells or hitting the Christmas tree in land by, by track, we will see this uh, uh, accident in the next slide. Also to sustain the maximum anticipated combined loads like tension, compression, and so on. What is the barrier classification? There are many classifications for barrier. One of them, we can classify it into mechanical barrier and hydrostatic barrier. Mechanical barrier must be very, uh, verified by pressure testing where possible. The test should be in the direction of flow. What does that mean, the direction of flow? We can show by this bin. If we consider this tubing, completion tubing, and set in plug, one-way plug, not positive plug, we will know the difference between negative plug, positive plug, and one-way plug. This is one-way plug only can only sustain the pressure from down to up. So the test should be in the direction of flow. You have to test the blood here from the down to up because it is one way blood. That is the mean of test should be in the direction of flow. Also mechanical barrier can be classified to close the type and the closable type. Close the type, it is normally closed, a permanent barrier in the, in the well that prevent fluid flow. For example, cement casing, closed barrier, usually tested when they are first installed. Closed type can be or normally usually tested when they are first installed. Also, another type, a closable type, it is normally open. These are barriers that are normally open, but can be closed to contain the well fluid. Example, POB rams, downhole safety valves, and so. Another classification of uh, barrier, another type of uh, barrier in this classification, it is hydrostatic barrier, mean hydrostatic barrier, fluid or liquids. Fluid or liquids like brine or fresh water, filter, seawater, and so. Mechanical barrier, we said before, closed type and the closable type. Closed, it's normally closed, like what? Like stuffing box and slick line, grease injection head and E-line, strapper and coil tubing, casing, tubing, backer, cement, which constitute the completion of tubing. Another mechanical barrier example for a closable type, we said a closable type, it is normal open, 
like POB of E line or slit line or coil tubing, annular preventing preventer which use it in uh, snubbing or drilling or completion retrieving or uh, uh, or recompletion operation. Also, Christmas tree it can normally open and should can be closed at any situation to shut in the wheel for any uh, case uh, to to uh, make test for the wheel or whatever. Also, subsurface safety valve it's normally open and we can close it for function test or at any catastrophic situation can be closed. Hydrostatic barrier can be uh, drilling fluids, completion fluid, fresh water, salt water, like brine. Uh, also, this that if we talking about hydrostatic barrier, you have to get in your mind the fluid barrier is the primary barrier you face as the first line of defense. So when you say hydrostatic barrier, it is the first barrier. So you have to say it is primary barrier. Also, it's a good practice to have more than one barrier always available in your well, whatever normal operation or well intervention operation. Next slide. Another classification here related to dependency can be classified as independent barrier and dependent barrier. Independent barrier, it is not reliant on another for integrity. A mechanical block, if we assume like a mechanical block is independent barrier, a properly tested would constitute a single and independent mechanical barrier. Dependent barrier, which is relies on another barrier for integrity. For example, a check valve that required a full column of hydrostatic or kill weight fluid above it to remain closed, like this illustration by this red band. We can show this situation, check valve that requires a full, a full column of kill weight fluid above it to remain close. If we consider this completion tubing and set a check valve here to sustain pressure from above. This check valve can sustain pressure from above only. So it is one way plug or one way valve. Any pressure comes from down to up can open the flubber or the check valve. So to consider this barrier should fill above the, uh, the valve here by column of fluid. So if we consider this P2 hydrostatic pressure constitute a weight of fluid above this, above this check valve, and pressure one comes from down. If pressure, hydrostatic pressure two, more than pressure come of one. So we can consider this flubber or check valve can consider it this situation uh, barrier. And it is called independent barrier because it is depend on column of fluid. That is dependent barrier and independent barrier. Fluid barrier, static column of mud or brine of sufficient density to overbalance the highest anticipated reservoir pressure can be classified as a fluid barrier. If mud remains static for too long, the mud solids, I mean bright, will begin to settle. When bright or, or, or solids of mud settle, the mud will lose the density as a situation will not consider barrier. Also, the barrier cannot be classified as independent barrier since it is depend on the effectiveness of LCM, low circulation material, to maintain hydrostatic pressure. I mean, barrier can be considered barrier without using LCM. If we use LCM in many situations like 
there are losses for permeable zone. As this case, it is not considered dependent. The barrier dependent. The barrier will be independent. The barrier because used the LCM. Also, a very important point: shell. As we know, the shell have many porosity but low permeability reservoir. So no LCM is required to add it for brine. So as this as this case, we can classify the brine as independent barrier because we're using for LCM. That is the, the uh, uh, characteristics of a fluid barrier, mud, brine, and fresh water also the same. But brine used uh, against of well board to, um, to protect the uh, formation from damage. What is the minimum barrier requirement? A minimum of two dependent and tested barriers should be, shall be available. We have to all time use two independent barrier and should be tested before any jobs. Also barrier should be tested in the direction of flow as we said before, like a check valve or a positive plug, sustain pressure from above and uh, below. If the plug sustain pressure from below, we have to test the blood from below to up only in the direction of flow. Also, the barrier must be capable of being operated, operated independently of each other. As we said, independent and dependent barrier. If one barrier fail, it must be possible to put backup barrier to sustain pressure in case of failure, the first barrier or primary barrier. Another classification for barriers can be classified to primary barrier, secondary barrier, and tertiary barrier. Usually, this classification used in well intervention operation, also in recompletion operation, and also we can say in drilling operation. What is the primary barrier? The primary barrier is the first object that prevents the flow from the well. The first line of defense can control the flow of the well from down to up or from zone to another zone. The first line. What is the secondary barrier? It is the second object that contains the flow or the object that will contain flow from the failed primary barrier in case of primary barrier failed. Tertiary barrier, the third object that prevents the flow from well, only used if both primary and secondary barrier fails. In the right diagram here, we have two, three colors, blue colors, red colors, and gray colors. Take a second and give where is the primary barrier and secondary barrier here. We said the primary bar barrier is the first line of defense. Where is the first line of defense here? It is green, uh, blue line. Because the flow come from, come from well bore here to up. So where is the first line? All this item called first line. So it is primary bar barrier, consists of many elements like backer, like uh, subsurface if default, like casing below backer and so. So this is envelope called primary barrier. Where is the second barrier, second line of defense in case of primary barrier fails? It is the red line here. If failure in this production tubing failed, the uh, secondary barrier will be the casing and also from the above will be Christmas three valves and so. Christmas three valves is second barrier for subsurface safety valve in case failure of uh, uh, system of subsurface safety valve. This is slide show uh, some of situation between primary, uh, primary barrier and 
secondary barrier, tertiary barrier. As you see in the uh, left diagram, say drilling, while drilling operation, the green line here is primary barrier. Sorry, blue line, blue line represents the primary barrier. We said while drilling, while drilling with mud, the first line of defense will be fluid, which is um, uh, liquid, which is be mud. So the first line while drilling is uh, mud, so it will be primary. The primary ear, uh, primary barrier E will be mud. Secondary barrier will be the drilling components or like casing or drill pipe or whatever. Secondary uh, barrier also will be uh, in the surface equipment of drilling will be OB. In case of failure of well control by primary barrier, will shut off the well through secondary barrier. While production of the well, second case, the primary barrier, the completion that contains the well. This is envelope that contains the oil or gas. Second barrier will be, as we said before, is a casing, and we the casing includes uh, safety head or well head, which is represented in Christmas tree. While last case, while well intervention, we have also primary and secondary barrier. The primary barrier here will be completion going up to BCE pressure control equipment of well intervention, whatever slick line, E line, digital slick line, full tubing, it differ from one method to another from the pressure control equipment, it will be secondary barrier. But the top here, top element here would be primary barrier, which is a stuffing box in slick line and the grease injection head in E line, stripper and coil tubing, and the annular preventer or stripper and snapping operation. So this primary barrier will differ from method to another in well intervention. In the next uh, slides, we have different cases of uh, diagram to show the difference between primary barrier and secondary barrier. As we said in this diagram before, the primary barrier here represent in blue line and secondary barrier represented in red line. So primary barrier elements will consist of formation or cab rock above reservoir for primary barrier, reservoir or cab rock, which prevent the oil go from zone to another zone. Casing, uh, cement of casing, yes, it's a primary barrier. Also casing below backer, production backer, this is production backer, completion string, and subsurface safety valve or down hole safety valve, and surface control safety valve, which is subsurface safety valve. Secondary barrier elements like casing, it's called the production casing, cement of this uh, section of casing, also tubing hanger here, or uh, well head casing with seal elements, also Christmas tree valve. We have also another diagram for drilling operation. As our right diagram show drilling activity, but with shareable drill uh, strain. So the primary barrier here, as we said before, mud secondary barrier, all these elements, including shear ram. Shear ram used, why? Because it is a shareable drill, stem, a drill strain. But the right diagram show un or non shareable drill strain. So the uh, shear ram will not be tertiary type here. So it will use secondary well barrier and add step in stand valve or check valve on the drill string inside the drill top of drill string. This is schematic show well intervention operation with primary and secondary uh, barrier. This is BHF well intervention. 
let's assume this is wireline will intervention operation. This is BHA and this is wire inside the well in order to give some of jobs like uh, 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 by wireline like water shut off or clear obstruction, whatever the job. Where is the primary barrier from the top to bottom? As we said, the top barrier here is a stuffing, boards, uh, a stuffing box or grease injection box in E line. Also, primary barrier will be BCE. All BCE equipment, pressure control equipment, will be presented as primary barrier. And also, the body of POB, not to close POB, it will be a, a secondary barrier. We will go with the green line here. The body of Christmas tree will be primary barrier. Also, top flange will be primary barrier. Production tubing will be primary barrier. And so, to the end of the completion. If I need to shut in the well for any catastrophic situation and the uh, BHA and wire inside the well, I will use secondary barrier, which will be at this case, which is BOP, blue out preventer, to be closable around to seal uh, around the slick line in order to seal the pressure and prevent the pressure and controllable flow from down to up. For information, also st 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 stuffing box, we can say it is a static and dynamic seal, but BOB, it is a static seal. So, so to use BOB as uh, a barrier, you have to static, we will be in static operation or shorten the operation and in a static mode to be a positive seal by BOB. And this slide show uh, we have in this slide we have to use all time to independent verified and tested barriers. One confirmed to zero locked uh, leak, one, one another one, and another one uh, of WPE well uh, pressure uh, elements not exceeding the ABI criteria. And we will see this criteria in the next uh, slide by the end of this uh, slide. Also, each, each uh, of two uh, well bore elements independently verified to leakage rate not exceeding the EBI. Break containment task, if we have a task like removing surface Christmas, be, uh, Christmas tree, like nibble up, nibble uh, down for BOB, isolation method number one. Which one? In the previous slide, method number, as we, we, we see here, method number one, we have to use two independent elements. Let's choose another uh, task like replacing or repairing outer annular annulus valve isolation method with which can be used uh, one two three let's see in the previous slide one two three as uh, we can use two independent barrier one zero uh, leakage barrier and another one with criteria leak and also we can use each of two independent barrier leaking but the two of them are can hold uh, and used as one barrier. Here, another uh, shape of classification for well integrity uh, barrier as surface barrier, Christmas tree or overhead assembly, structure barrier, casing, liner, tubing, string, uh, cementing in annulus and show bone strains and whatever. Down hole barrier, which is in the down area or down part of well, like packer, down hole safety valve, flue containment plugs, which is said by your line, hydrostatic column of mud or brine or uh, uh, fresh water, 
geological barrier cement sheets between formation and decasing, which is cemented by cement and previous interior bed. It is another classific classification shape of well integrity barrier. This is rig up for wire line or slick line operation. Primary uh, barrier here when the wire, wire line. When the wire line tool string is at the surface, the three valve tool string at the surface, the three valves are closed to allow the lubricator to be vented and open. The Christmas three valves form here the primary barrier. The secondary barrier, wire line VOB that can close around and seal on the wire in the hole while, while the wire on the hole. For braided line and E line, they will run VOB is required. This is rig up for E line, not slick line. Christmas tree valve, if the wire parties, if the wire here parties and ejected from the stuffing box to the surface, out of the stuffing box, as this case, pressure should be contained in the lubricator by BOB gland here, should be contained in the lubricator by BOB gland or bore check valve or uh, BOB plunger. During fishing operation, there are many, many occasions where wire is stripped through close BOB. In this situation, the BOB becomes a primary barrier. Tertiary barrier, wire cutting the valve, usually upper muscle valve designed to cut the slick line or the uh, slick line or wire line uh, also, another situation in BCE, use sheared uh, uh, BOB uh, uh, for shear the, or cut the wire. In this case, it is called tertiary barrier. The situation for E-line rig up, primary barrier here, grease injection head, the check valve that located below the injection head in situation of the wire jumped or ejected from the uh, grease injection head should be primary barrier in this case. Also, a Christmas tree will be barrier in the, if the tool and the wire out of the well. Secondary barrier will be two rams of POB and the Christmas tree valves if the wire and the tools out of the well. Tertiary barrier will be through wire line cutting the valve. Here it is shear and seal BOB. Because Christmas tree valves couldn't shear and cut the braided line, uh, uh, so the all time used in PCE pressure control equipment, uh, tertiary barrier, which is shear seal BOB. This is coil tubing rig up. Let's see the uh, primary, secondary, tertiary barrier. Primary barrier, the top. One is a stripper. Second, also Christmas tree will be used as primary as if the coil and beach stay out of the well. Christmas tree will be at this case primary barrier. Secondary barrier here will be BOB. Sorry, this is BOB and this is Christmas tree. Will be OB, will be uh, uh, secondary uh, barrier. Uh, also, the tertiary barrier will uh, be shear and seal BOB like E-line because Christmas tree unable to cut and shear coil because uh, at this case, we use tertiary barrier, which is shear and seal BOB. Internal pressure uh, con uh, control and barrier inside the coil tube because the coil is hollow, I can bump fluid from the coil and get returned from the annulus. We have to get two types of barrier here, internal and external. We mentioned before the external stripper BOB and shear and seal uh, uh, barrier or BOB, but internal pressure control, primary barrier will be inside the top of BHA of coil uh, check valve to prevent any uh, flow come from coil to down to surface uh, as a situation, it will be used as a primary barrier. Secondary barrier 
the hydrostatic head of a fluid which pumping the, through the coil. At this case, at this case, uh, a check valve used and uh, that's used in the uh, coil tube. It is dependent barrier because it is shutting the fluid from down to up, not the vice versa. Tertiary barrier shear and the seal capability in BOB shear serum will be tertiary for external and internal control. Also, this is a different situation for primary and secondary barrier. We will show this slide in the next well advanced well intervention course. So in order to save, save more time, we will skip some of the presentation and some of the slides to get the target of this webinar. Also, we can share uh, with OBA this presentation as PDF to to check this slide, which we skipped. Will barrier also verification? Verification test is check whether or not uh, will barrier element meets its acceptance criteria. So will barrier should be tested all time, should be uh, tested from time to another time based on the regulation of the company. I mean here owner company or operating company. Uh, also uh, make uh, uh, a lot of tests like function testing through test and so. Acceptable leaking rate, it also different from country to another, from company to another, but we can say this maximum acceptable leak across Christmas, uh, Christmas tree uh, based on ISO uh, 31-2. For Christmas tree valves acceptance uh, criteria, for one inch, it will be uh, two cubic centimeter per minute for bare inch of valve size for liquid. For gas, it would be 0.35 scuff per minute per inch for valve size. Based on size, you can calculate how much of the valve should be tested as criteria of leaking. Also, acceptance criteria for subsurface safety valve, uh, uh, 24 liter per hour for liquid, also can convert to peer pressure a PSI or another unit. For gas will be 900 scuff per hour for gas. This is acceptance criteria, criteria. And as we said before, this different from company to another or from criteria to another. Well barrier equipment or WPE, well barrier elements. In the slide section, we will focus on some equipment uh, can used as element for well uh, barrier as uh, constitute the envelope of barrier. First one, subsurface safety valve. Why all time, most of time, we use subsurface safety valve in order to protect human life, protect the environment, protect the operator investment, operator investment here, the owner company, also governmental legislation to protect the country requirement and regulation. The next few slides show some of uncontrollable flow. This slide show Lake View Gusher well was an eruption of hydrocarbons from pressurized oil well in the California. In 1999, in it created the largest accidental oil spill in history, lasting 18 months and releasing an estimated 9 billion barrels of crude oil. Can you imagine? 9 million barrels lost because it is uncontrollable flow. Also, the slides show and uh, uh, well, X took uh, number one, 1979. This well suffered from blue out, resulting in the largest oil spill in the history at this time. Up to, uh, up to date, it remains the second largest 
oil spill in U.S. history after the Water Horizon oil spill. The initial stage of the oil spill estimated is uh, uh, 30 30,000 barrel of oil per day. One spell was initially caused by tanker hitting, hitting a platform in uh, 1983, Iran rose field, I think. The platform was attacked by, uh, by uh, truck and spill caught fire. The Iran uh, war prevented technician from cabbing this well. So it was lost a lot of oil and it is considered one of catastrophic uh, oil spill in the history. I'm showing this slide to imagine the importance of using barrier and the importance of keeping this barrier in all time, most of time to be hold as can as possible. Also, uh, at, uh, the, uh, while the uh, war of uh, Iraq and Kuwait, Iraq decided to destroy the oil field to achieve a military advantage. In March 1991, the accumulated financial losses were estimated around uh, 9 billion of Kuwait reserve. Can you imagine this? Uh, at the world prices at, at this time, it would amount 1 billion and 50 dollars. So subsurface safety valve uh, uh, components, subsurface safety valve uh, can be consist of, from the top part, control line, and based on flow tube or inner, man, inner mandrel, spring, and flubber. Okay, during normal operation condition, a surface bending or hand bomb in well intervention operation, or while uh, well intervention operation, CAC bending or hand bomb supplies hydraulic pressure to the downhole safety valve via hydraulic control line. The pressure it drive down the piston here, drive down this piston down, a compressing power for return spring. At the same time, also move the inner mandrel or flow tube down. In order to what? In order to move the uh, flow tube and open the flubber. And all times this flow tube will be opposite and against the flubber to protect the flubber from any erosion or any flow coming from down. So, so that is the mechanism of subsurface safety. Uh, well. uh, you can uh, see this mechanism on YouTube. There are many uh, videos uh, for the mechanism. If you couldn't imagine the mechanism, you can search uh, subsurface safety valve mechanism. You will find many uh, videos. Uh, this uh, slide show uh, two positions for flubber. As we said before, as long as line pressure is maintained, the valve remains open here. So this is a situation of flubber open. If control line uh, lost the pressure, we, uh, the uh, lost the pressure and the spring here will push the flow tube up, allowing the flubber or board to close. Uh, closure can be tricked by pressure sensing pylon attaching to the flow line at the surface. So this is flubber closed and the left one is flubber open. This slide show uh, subsurface safety valve classification. Subsurface safety valve can be classified into main categories based on controlling mechanisms: surface control and subsurface control. Surface control, which is can be controlled from surface. Subsurface control can be controlled from subsurface, unable to control from surface. So. Surface control, subsurface safety valve, uh, like 
um, a tubing retrievable safety valve, wireline retrievable safety valve, any type of subsurface safety valve using control line, it is called surface control safety valve. Any another, any types of surface control or subsurface control, subsurface safety valve uh, used and unable to use control, it is called uh, subsurface control. So we have two types of surface control safety valve, a tubing retrievable safety valve and wireline retrievable safety valve. Surface control safety valve can either be run as integral part of the completion tubing retrievable this type and run through the tubing and set an aborted safety valve landing enable it would be wireline retrievable safety well, everyone, ha everyone had pros. Uh, uh, everyone has pros and cons, advantage and disadvantage, based on the company uh, choose. The left figure show wireline retrievable, wireline retrievable safety valve. In the same way as a tubing retrievable valve. Internally, the valve configuration of piston and also of your tube is bring a closing the flubber also control line. Use the control line of original one for tubing retrievable. So the inside here is wire line retrievable safety valve using control line of a tubing retrievable in this color. I think it is move color, this uh, light move color. It is a tubing retrievable contain wireline retrievable safety valve. Both of them used control lines, so both of them called surface control. This one is tubing retrievable uh, safety valve. Downhole safety valve, tubing retrievable. The only real difference is the method of delivering control fluid, fluid to the best one. In the tubing retrievable valve, the control line is connected directly to the hydraulic chamber. Here, tubing retrievable, control line connected directly to the valve. In the other side, wire line retrievable safety valve, the control line is connected to the aborted wire line nipple that is run as a part of completion tubing and the hydraulic fluid passes through this port into the tubing where it is trapped between two set upper backing and lower backing in order to go through the uh, uh, body of wireline retrievable one in order to open flubber. So that is the difference between tubing retrievable and wireline retrievable. I think the difference between them is clear right now. Tubing retrievable safety valve can be classified into uh, two categories, self-equalizing and non-self-equalizing. Self-equalizing, uh, no need for applying pressure from up, but non-self-equalizing in order to open the flubber after bumping and the pressure up through control line, you have to equalizing between above and below the flubber to, in order to open completely or start the open. Equalizing valve here are equipped with simple check seat recorded into the flubber. When control line pressure is applied to the valve, the flow tube moves down until it contacts the flubber. If there is differential pressure across the valve, it cannot be open. If is, there is differential pressure between above and below flubber, cannot be open. So you have to make equalizing above them if there is no equalizing valve like here. This is equalizing valve type. I think we are running out of time as webinar time limited uh, uh, to one hour, I think. So uh, uh, we have uh, uh, to save time and go to uh, quickly to other uh, slides. We said tubing retrievable safety valve can be classified to self equalizing and non self equalizing. Also, our line retrievable safety valve can be classified to primary, secondary. One primary can, some of wells can be 
set in the well can be uh, set inside the body of a tubing retrievable uh, valve uh, should the tubing retrievable fail uh, fail an integrity test. Sorry, we said the difference between primary and secondary. Primary, it is original and it can be set directly to the nipple in the completion tubing. But the secondary here like this, it, it is wireline retrievable safety valve, which set inside tubing retrievable safety valve. But wireline, uh, but primary one, no tubing retrievable safety valve, just only set inside the uh, uh, tubing nipple directly. Okay. Also, this figure show uh, how to set the uh, uh, wireline retrievable inside the tubing like this. This is the actual photo show the nipple and the upper backing and the control line goes through the tubing, the, the tubing completion and go to the primary uh, wireline retrievable. In this case, there is no a tubing retrievable safety valve directly wireline retrievable to, to the completion of tubing. Here it is completion, uh, it is secondary wireline retrievable connect to the control line directly also. Um, we have finished the surface control safety valve. Now we will talk about subsurface control safety valve. Subsurface control safety valve relied ob, uh, upon an increase in flow velocity to close tapered valve against valve seat. Tapered valve against valve uh, seat, uh, a catastrophic uh, failure of the well head would cause an increase in flow. So they close a flow velocity exceed predetermined valve. The type of valves are run both uh, completion and uh, are usually set and conventional nipple profile, and there are two types of subsurface control safety valve velocity type and the ambient type. This is actual photo for uh, subsurface control, which is called the storm choke. This is K valve ambient type. This valve used, uses a nitrogen charge to hold use nitrogen charge here to hold the valve open, to hold the valve uh, open. If ambient pressure at the valve drop below this point, sorry, the nitrogen is charged to hold the valve closed. If pressure at the valve drops below predetermined valve, as may occur during large volume leak at the surface for any catastrophic situation, the valve will close directly. Also, it may require regular replacement in location where there is a rapid decline in flowing pressure. It is a flow operated uh, safety valve, another type of uh, storm choke. Annulus safety valve. Were developed primarily for use it, uh, in gas lift well. They are designed to return, retain high or sustain high pressure gas in lifting in the annulus in the event of loss of integrity at the well head. Annulus safety valves are nearly always run just below the tubing safety, as we see here. Sorry. Below tubing retrievable safety uh, valve. If they were positioned above uh, well control for the tubing safety valve would have to be cut and fed through the annular safety valve. So it should be below subsurface safety valve. As we said, it is developed because uh, to retain high pressure gas used in lifting operation in the annulus in the event of loss integrity of the well head. Like the conventional safety valve, the pressure to keep the annular safety valve open, like here, loss of hydraulic pressure causes the valve to 
close, like uh, the uh, right uh, figure or light gram. It is uh, closed or shut off uh, annular safety valve. Here is the position of opening the annular safety valve. Christmas tree, I think uh, we have a lot of uh, candidates with experience, so we will skip this point in order to save our time. Christmas tree, as we know, consists of lower master valve, upper master valve, flowing wing, choke valve, kill wing valve, swell valve, and so on. We have two type of Christmas tree, uh, conventional type and solid uh, block. Uh, conventional uh, uh, type of uh, will head here, sorry. Christmas type, solid block and the composite block Christmas tree. This is one is this called solid block composite. This is solid block. This is solid block, this is composite because it is consists of flange, mini flange, flange to flange. Uh, lower master valve has a flange to connect it with the upper and also uh, flange to a swell valve, but it is uh, consists of one block. So it is called solid block. Also we have horizontal Christmas tree. It is called uh, horizontal in sub C well. Uh, well head types. We have two types of well head conventional and nearly all of company used compacted pipe as you see. Each one have pros and cons, but usually uh, use this type of well head. <clears throat> <clears throat> but frankly, many wells are still equipped with the traditional spool well head, where each casing is strength. Each casing string is suspended from a separate and approximately sized casing spool. This means each time a casing string is run, the OBOB must be removed. So it will take many times. New casing is spool fitted and the BOB rigged up, backed up. This process is post time consuming and costly. Moreover, a multi spool construction means multiple flange and gasket seals. Therefore, many potential leak both between this flange. But this type, no, no, uh, uh, no many uh, flanges. So just one is bull here. See, when nipple up and down, it's one life while draining or completion. This is the difference between and the pros and cons of each one. You can check this items. Uh, uh, before, uh, after uh, sharing the presentation, tubing hanger, the tube uh, part of completion called tubing hard, the tubing uh, uh, hunger. Why using tubing hunger? Uh, <clears throat> to support the hanging weight of the tubing and any additional tension or compression force over and above the tubing. String weight, it also sees the production analysis forming a mechanical barrier between reservoir, between reservoir and surface. This is tubing hanger here, can seal and make and prevent the communication between this point and uh, surface uh, area. This is a casing spool or the top spool where a Christmas tree suspended here or hang off here. Inside this flange or spool, this is a tubing hanger. If you uh, see inside the tubing hanger, you will find tubing hanger block. Why most of time uh, using hanger block? In order to what? Okay, uh, this presentation not uh, show the tubing uh, hanger block, but let's say tubing hanger block used as a barrier inside the completion when repair Christmas tree, the build up Christmas tree or whatever as a barrier to uh, in, in the top of the completion. But frankly, my, some of sure companies uh, avoid to use this type of barrier because need barrier below the sea level. This this the top of completion, which it is uh, near and close to Christmas tree and above the uh, sea level. So some of company not use this plug type of uh, hanger 
block. Uh, this slide shows the difference between annulus A, B, C. I think you know the difference between A. Uh, then annulus A, it is the, the annulus between production tubing and production casing. The first casing, obviously, to completion, it is consist constitute the uh, envelope called annulus. Annulus B and C uh, 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 has uh, the uh, annulus between the first uh, casing and second casing. C between second casing and third casing and so on. Tubing block, last section, last section in this presentation, tubing block. Tubing block and divided into four categories of block which you hold from below and another type hold from above blocks which you hold from both direction above and below hold. Uh, and another last one blocks which you hold the pressure to set while this called bump out plug. Also you should, uh, check that pressure rating is correct. You have to check the contingency exit of solid might settle in the blood top. Check also the blood is holding the pressure after sitting in the direction of flow. That is the uh, type of uh, blood. Let's see uh, different shape of, of blood. This is BX uh, block uh, used uh, by uh, deployed by uh, wireline or slack line. Uh, uh, it is positive block can sustain pressure from above and uh, down. This block consists of bronc and nipple, and this uh, it is called the equalizing port. And this bronc is sustained uh, can see this uh, equalizing port by top seal and bottom seal, and this is bottom cap can be threaded by the bottom of the block. So this block uh, can be set in two rounds. First round set lock with block, with the bottom block. The second round set wrong inside here to in order to seal the equalizing board here. This is PX block deployed by slick line. This is back pressure valve which is set inside the tubing hanger. Uh, it is called BBV, back pressure valve. There are many type of BBV, but in this slide show uh, type H. Back pressure valve are installed in the tubing hanger to hold the pressure from below during the following operation. Number one, nipple down up the drilling BOB stack, nipple up or down Christmas tree, Test the Christmas tree two-way check. Replace the master valve. The most common type of this PV are the Cameron type uh, H. Also, there is type like AB, but it's not uh, common. Uh, and this type of uh, uh, type H, BBV, hold the pressure from below to isolate well pressure, but not uh, sustain pressure from above. So it's called one. Uh, one way barrier or uh, one isolation barrier. Okay, by this uh, type of uh, blog, we have finished our presentation. So we have uh, some questions. Let's uh, answer uh, one by one. First question Christmas tree. Okay, in general, some uh, skip the questions and the, we can solve these questions uh, by uh, after receiving the question with candidates. Please, the uh, word with you. Thank you so much, Engineer Abdullah, for this interesting uh, presentation. Uh, actually, a very detailed one with uh, real pictures. Thank you so much for your efforts, uh, you both in this presentation. Uh, everyone in the meeting, now is the time for the questions. So please feel free to uh, send us your questions in the chat area so that we can uh, uh, read them loudly to engineer the last so that he can answer them. So now is the time for the questions. Uh, I also sent you uh, the feedback link uh, in the chat and I will send it again now. Uh, so please take a minute to fill in this feedback form. This uh, will help us to 
improve and for what you was uh, what you want in the in the upcoming webinars, inshallah. Uh, so guys, uh, waiting for your questions. We did uh, receive questions till now. I think that your presentation was very clear since why you are not receiving questions. Uh, I hope that. Yes, yes, sure. So we can proceed with your uh, questions part in your presentation. And if we get a question in the chat, I will read it to you. Okay. Okay, uh, this question is related to IWF uh, question. Uh, first question say, Christmas trees to be changed out on production will deep set positive block has been set in the tail, uh, tail by below the becker in the nipple, mean here X nipple, X nipple below the becker. A second block will be set in the tubing hanger before the tree can be removed. What is the correct first action to take before setting the second block? Take a second and we will answer the right uh, answer. Okay, so right answer number A, inflow test the deep set block. Why? Because he, uh, in, uh, in this situation, he said positive block sustain pressure from above and below. So you have uh, to make inflow test for this plug before set another one to uh, test each one independently uh, test. Second question, newly completely well has a slided sleeve. SSD just above the becker. The sleeve has just been closed with the tubing full of diesel and the annulus full of brine. The tubing is open to the perforation. How should the SSD be tested to ensure it is closed. Take a second and we'll answer. Right answer, bleed down the tubing. To check the flow coming from SSD, or not. Uh, this figure show um, where is the primary, secondary, and tertiary uh, barrier. As we said before in our presentation, the primary barrier will be stuffing box, secondary barrier will be uh, BOB, tertiary one, uh, uh, swab valve, or Christmas tree, upper master valve, because this is thick line rig up, not wire line. Up. If it is braided line, will be here in rig up, shear ram or uh, uh, safety head uh, ram. Let's take the last question, which is the following statement about Christmas tree valve is true. Any swab can be used to cut slick line. It's not right. Some uh, master valve can be used to cut slight line, no. Any flu wing, no. Uh, any kill wing, no. So some master valve uh, number B is the right answer because the upper master valve is recommended to cut a slick line. Answer right will be number 
uh, uh, B, will be B. Okay, by this uh, slide, we have finished our presentation and the question. Thank you for your attending and thank you, Engineer Asa. Uh, thank you again, Engineer Abdullah. Uh, I really find your uh, webinar a very interesting one, uh, really detailed one, actually. Uh, so guys, if you are interested to know more, this is just one hour webinar. If you are interested to know more about this uh, well intervention uh, operation, I, I really encourage you all to register in our upcoming course. This will be in four days from today. So uh, I encourage you to register with us. Uh, I believe you are going to uh, learn more from this course. Uh, as I see in this presentation, it's very interactive. Thank you, Engineer Abdullah, again. Thank you to everyone for joining us today's uh, webinar. Uh, see you in upcoming webinars, and don't uh, don't to, don't worry. You will, if you missed any part of this uh, session today, you will find it uh, on the YouTube just after we finish uh, this uh, this uh, moment. Also, all previous webinars are available as well. So enjoy your learning journey with OBA Energy. Thank you again. Good evening, and bye bye.